morning, good afternoon, whichever place you are watching from, wherever you are, this is Health Focus, a platform where we focus on health issues, equipment, professionals, diseases, and anything you will expect to learn about health, especially to students and parents, focusing and looking for professionals, professions that will suit their children. If this is your first time in this channel, kindly like, subscribe, and share. If this is the kind of content you like to watch or view, why not stick around and keep on watching so that you can be equipped well. My name is Emi. Today's focus is another profession that rarely people know and think about. You will only meet them in case of trauma. They used to be called plaster technician. Right now they are called trauma technician. It's trauma technology. They are the first people you meet whenever you've gotten injured in an accident, there's a broken bone or anything to stabilize you before you go to theater. This is the kind of professions that are very many in healthcare, but one of the 17. In that regard, without much ado, let's welcome one of the people in the technology to give us a lot of information or more information about it. Karibu sana, Mark. My name is Mark Onyango Omalu. My profession, I'm an orthopedic from a technologist. Okay, thank you, Mark. And please tell us where you went to school, where you grew up, your primary education and high school. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I was born and raised in uh, Eastlands. That one is in uh, Jericho Estate where I was uh, born and bred. Uh, my primary school, I went to Rabai Road Primary School, which is in Jericho. Later on, after passing so well in my primary level, I went to Sawagongo High School, which is in Siaya, which uh, I did also well. I got a B plane. And uh, afterwards, I went to KMTC Nairobi campus, where I pursued my uh, diploma in orthopedic technologies. Okay, you've just given us a crushed summary. May we know when you were in primary school, what did you want to be? Uh, okay. What did you want to be? Uh, when I was in primary, I wanted to be a civil engineer. Why? Yes, because I was uh, the best in sciences and maths. So mm -hmm. my focus was to be an engineer and a spe specifically a civil engineer. Had you met civil engineers, there are so many other careers that people who pass maths and physics can do. And even in primary, we didn't have physics, but we, need, we had science. So did you <coughs> consider any other field apart from civil engineering? Uh, none. I didn't because uh, most of the time uh, I focused on engineering because I had people who had done engineering before okay. me, electrical okay. engineering and civil engineering. So that was my focus okay. still when, while I was in primary. Then when we went to but high school? Later on in high school, uh, I, I, I became the best mostly in uh, biology and all the sciences, especially maths. And that's where now I got now the urge of doing medicine or, or a medical pro, uh, course. That okay. Can help me. Did you have an idea of all the 17 cadres? I rather right now I hear the even more. Did you have an idea about them? Yes, I, I knew about uh, pharmacy and clinical, offici uh, clinical officer, uh, but the rest I didn't know. How did it's you? Later on, that I knew. How did you know about pharmacy and clinical medicine? It's now through a friend. Okay. Yes, that one was just through a, through a friend because I asked uh, which course can I do that entails most of the sciences. So I was being told that uh, you can do nursing, either you can do clinical officer or you can be a pharmacist. Okay. But uh, after now, after my form four, there's a program in our church. Uh, it's about the community health that we are moving to help the disadvantaged in the community. That's when now I got now the urge now to do orthopedic because it entailed now the disability okay. and our fracture management. Okay. So by the time you are applying to do trauma technology, you already knew what it was all about. Yes. And you had made your mind? Yes, I had made my mind to do orthopedic trauma technology. Okay. What does an orthopedic trauma technologist do? Uh, most of the time they manage fractures. They help now. Uh, they are like uh, uh, assistant to the surgeons. Because most of the time, after every surgery, they need a plaster or a trauma technology now to help in immobilizing uh, the limb. And also, most of the time, we help now in, during the casualty when we have accidents, now in helping now people who have compound fractures, we help also in uh, immobilizing the limbs 
and any other part of the body that needs a plaster or any other assistive device. So you come in at the time of trauma, you immobilize the limb, yes. then after surgery from the surgeon, you still keep on immobilizing the limb. Yes. So what happens if I don't meet a technologist after trauma? Uh, most, most of the time we'll find that you'll get a mismanagement. If, if at all you don't have a trauma technologist, you'll have a mismanagement because now the patient wants to be immobilized and uh, the patient will still be in pain. And uh, for, for one now to at least to control the pain and to control also part of the bleeding, you need uh, immobilization. So you need to make it stable and not move around. Sure. So your role at the trauma site is to ensure that the limb does not move at all. Very true. So that you don't have pain. Yes. Give us your life in medical training college. Uh, my life in basic medical training was, uh, it was the best ever because uh, it was an experience that I, I did most of the practical work rather than the oral, oral, and, uh, oral work. Because most of the time I was in the field work, uh, and in the hospital doing practical training. So for, for me, I can say the best experience in my college part was dealing one-on-one. -on -one. As a student, I was dealing one-on-one -on -one with patients. That's what gave us even the confidence now to be, uh, to, be uh, as in, to get the skills and the techniques in orthopedic technology. Okay, so yes. it, how long is an orthopedic trauma technology training? It's uh, three years. In the three years duration, you get straight to practicals, or how long do you do classwork? Uh, the first year, you, you, it's mostly about uh, just the classwork, and then after first year, now from the second year, we go to our rotational different hospitals, where we get uh, where we get the experience, and in the third year, now is where now you go for the attachment, where now at least you are attached in one hospital that you can do much compared to the rotational work. So uh, the, the third year you are attached somewhere yes. in a facility the whole year? Yes, you are attached. Three years, three years, three months, three months, so like six months. In, in a attachment. facility, yes. immobilizing patients sure. pre and post care. Post care. Wow. So at the end of the training, what can you say was your wow factor? What can you say that it, it was an eye opener about this career? Yes. Uh, my eye opener was uh, most of the time, uh, after, after college, most of the time you expect now to get work. But in this, uh, in this our profession, most of, most of the time is determination. So you must go to a hospital, either you do a volunteer work or so, so as to start and to, to get more skills. So that is the most important thing that most of the medical students should go for. Instead of going of waiting to, for employment, you can start, first of all, volunteering. Through your volunteership is when now the employment comes later. Do institutions just get you on board when you want to volunteer? You must apply and uh, you must give reasons for you now to come for to your volunteer. Skill. Yes. Okay, let's go back to, to the training duration and um, trauma technologist is not a training you can do on skeleton bones yes. you need to do it on a real patient to see your impact sure. so during that time when you are checking on the real patients how can you say the experience is because I know some bones are long some bones are short some bones need weight and energy some bones don't yes. how is that experience when you are as a student yeah, most of, the, most of the time as a student, you get that uh, you've been given now the knowledge through papers. And now it's, it's time for you now to implement it. And uh, for us, most of the time, we always look for the techniques because for us as tra trauma technologists, first of all, when you get now the technique of uh, fracture management and dislocation, and when you know now uh, what you're supposed to do, if you have a fracture, for example, when you have a fracture on a long uh, bone, what are you supposed to do? What is the procedure? What are, what are the processes that are, are supposed to be done? And uh, when you have a fracture maybe on the small bone, 
what is the say, what is the pro procedure or what is expected of you to immobilize now the patient so that uh, you can relieve her, him or her for pain. So it doesn't matter your strength or your weight? It doesn't matter. It's just wow. the technique and the skill. Okay. I'm looking at the skeleton uh, beside you. Sure. This bone mostly can break at the neck of femur. Yes. So for instance, uh, at the neck of femur, you have to pull it down to a line. Yes. It needs a skill and not energy. Yes, yes. it needs a skill. Because most of the time, even uh, the, the, the point that we have spotted the neck of femur, most of the time we do traction and you must have the skill in doing this traction, either skeletal or uh, skin traction, you must have the technique first before now touching the patient. What will be the difference um, in, in a patient that did not have a trauma technologist work on them when they had the same fracture mm -hmm. and the one that had, apart from pain? Okay, uh, most of the time you'll find that uh, the difference is uh, uh, it depends with the some some of uh, the uh, some of so, some of us have trained through first aid, which uh, help them now maybe in an accident or any other thing to help in immobilizing before now the patient reaches uh, the hospital. So when the patient reaches the hospital, now the difference comes because now you you are a professional uh, trauma technologist. Now you know how to handle the patient from the time you, you receive the patient from casualty. Yeah, but I, I mean, the, the, the question is, again, what will be the difference in a patient that the technologist did not immobilize yes. and the patient that was immobilized mm -hmm. in relation to healing and management apart from pain? Oh, apart is the healing process. Because most of the time you'll find a, a patient that has been done with a uh, trauma technologist because he has done... A uh, professional work, you find that even the healing process and the healing time, it will differ with the the other person. Okay. Yes. So the, the, it means you will have aligned it properly. Yes, you will have aligned and uh, managed or done a cast that is well uh, done for the for the fracture that you are oh, doing. All right. In the profession of orthopedic trauma technologist, mm -hmm. it's it's how how. What do I want to ask you? In this profession of orthopedic trauma technologies, yes. how many institutions are, are there that you can be able to work, apart from orthopedic hospitals, are they able to work in all general hospitals? Uh, probability, uh, the probability mm -hmm. is 50, because most of the time that uh, the, the trauma technologists, most of them work in an institution that have uh, orthopedic departments. Okay. Though they still work uh, with the other hospital, but they will always be working maybe under the physiotherapy or uh, occupational therapy or the rehab team. But most of the time you will find them in the ortho orthopedic uh, hospitals. In institutions that will be having orthopedic, orthopedic services. services. If yeah. the institution is not having orthopedic services, it's very you will different. not be relevant there. Yeah. Okay, I see. So today, if somebody um, picks Mark and tells Mark you're going to the Ministry of Health to make policies and make, make rules concerning health institutions in the nation, yes. what will be your main focus? Uh, my main focus, first of all, will be on the welfare of uh, most, most of uh, the medical practitioners. Welfare in terms of now the workmanship and how they are being paid, that will be the first thing. The other thing will also be on dealing with now uh, the workmanship or in terms of most of the institution they have uh, uh, less medical practitioners. So my main focus will be now to implement and to help increase the number of uh, medical practitioners so as to help now the community. The other thing also, uh, the infrastructure, because most of the hospitals you'll find for us uh, for you to work in a hospital, there must be an X-ray, so, because for someone, to, for you to notice that someone has a fracture, he or she must go through the X-ray. So that is the major part that I can do when maybe I am while implementing the policies, medical policies, and try to now bring uh, people on board to uh, to buy and to do infrastructure through the hospitals. 
So we will focus on infrastructure and human resource, human resource. two major things in healthcare. That was orthopedic trauma technology as a career, and you've heard it from Mark. We will be looking at the deformities that they focus on as they work in orthopedic institutions because their work is not totally in terms of trauma alone. They also work on deformities. Thank you. Good day.